Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This one is a much requested video. I get emails and texts and messages for months every day asking me to channel this particular person. Let me explain a little bit about how it works for me. What happens for me is I ask people to come through and to kind of meld with their energy with mine so that I can pick up on texture with them. And if they're not willing to do it, I tend to not do the video. So a couple of hours ago, I was upstairs and I was like, who am I gonna do a video with? Because I couldn't really feel anyone. And then I felt him. And so I'm talking about the rapper Tupac. Tupac that you guys really want to know about and know what happened to him. I really don't feel he's alive. That's the first thing right off the bat. I, I mean, his energy is alive, but not the way that you're thinking he's alive as in on the earth, alive on the planet earth. But with Tupac, it was very, very fascinating to begin with because I immediately was shoved right back into his childhood and I connected with the energy of his early life. And I first want to start by saying he's a June 16th, 1971, and I could not find an accurate time of birth online that was consistent for me to actually know what his rising sign was. I tend to use the birth certificate, the parent's word, um, and I believe his mother just passed away, if I'm correct. Maybe not, but I, I think I recall that. I tend to use the information from the family and I don't have access to that. So I couldn't tell you what his rising sign is. But what I can tell you is that he's either a late degrees Pisces moon or early degrees Aries. When I look at him, I get Aries because he's in your face with his words. So he's causing the conflict with what he says and sings and raps. So that to me is very much emotionally connected to the verbiage that he speaks. And that causes kind of a warring effect, which is the moon in Aries. It's a strong moon. Now, when I look at him, I could not determine his rising sign. It was driving me crazy. It drives me crazy. As an astrologer, I want to know the person's rising sign. But when I looked at him and felt his life and felt what he went through, I really feel he was last degrees of Libra rising going and progressed into Scorpio rising because I just feel like he needed to put things back into balance in his life, meaning with the work that he did and with everything around him. And so that kind of energy is very much a Libra rising and he would have progressed into Scorpio at the time that he passed. But I go right back to the early childhood with him. And it's really funny because he's like, you think I'm a badass motherfucker, okay? That's what he says, like, you think that? But really, he was truly a Gemini through and through. He was living duality, two different lives. He didn't really come from exactly where it was portrayed that he came from. He was educated. He was interested in literature. He wasn't a ghetto banger, okay? So this wasn't what he was. And he was born into a family, and I believe we all know this, that was incredibly political. In other words, they were working on rising their people up and stopping society as a whole, or at least the government, from keeping the black community down. Now, I think we know he came from that. And he came from it really strong. He had relatives that were Black Panthers. He had relatives that were fighting up against the government. He had relatives that were jailed all over the place. His mother, uh, birth father, I believe, uncles, etc. all of this. However, go beyond that. And he was really socially and politically conscious as a child and also ahead of his time. So as a little kid, he was quite smart, but he couldn't always let everybody know how smart he was because that would ruin what he was trying to do. And he was very, very sensitive. Okay, this is a sensitive young man, and I'm talking under the age of 10, extremely sensitive. His mother was kind of harsh for him. So his mother was a harsh person in his eyes. In other words, he was, he was more... Um, sensitive to his environment, sensitive to what was around him, empathic. He would have been the empath in the family and his mother was the aggressive kind of like in your face mother type. And that would actually conclude that he did have the early degrees of an Aries moon because otherwise he would have had a Pisces moon and that would have been his mother. But I really feel like he had an Aries moon. So that should get me closer to his time of birth, but I don't have it exact. Now, when Tupac was younger, he knew that his life was destined. It was told to him. He's basically telling me that he was born into this and he knew where he was going. So it was no accident that he ended up being a big commercial success in the rap music industry. This was 
planned. This was set out. This is what he was to do. He was structured. He was saying, I was born to do this. Now, what I noticed and what I felt and what I felt right off the bat is that his life was extremely karmic. Obviously, all of our lives are karmic, but his life was really, really karmic in that he had specific relationships that he had to engage in and fulfill in order to fulfill his life karma. This is part of what he's leading up to as he's talking about what happened to him. Now, as he got into rap, he had a different vision for rap than actually what happened. And that was part of the problem. When he signed up with, um, I believe it was Death Row Records and it was Suge Knight. And that's really funny or ironic or perhaps not, where Suge Knight is right now. So that man with all the power and all the strength and all the bitch ass aggressiveness, because he's kind of showing me that Suge Knight was a totally different type of human being than he was. It's not a judgment, it's what I'm being told. It's just showing me different levels of humanity. And this person was basically focused in one direction. And I think we know the direction, it was money. He was, Suge Knight was basically, obviously a talent, former. He was a money man. So he was a, we'll call him a pimp for lack of a better word, but he was a music pimp for them. Okay. So he came out, he gave them opportunity. He gave them payment, but beyond that, his extension and the way that he worked his business was very cut and dry. It's like, you're going to do this. I'm going to do this. It's going to go like this. It's going to go like that. So Suge Knight was very cut and dry. The way that he ran his business was very much, we're gonna do it this way, it's my way. The way that you wanna do things doesn't really matter because I'm the businessman, I know what I'm doing. So he was very much that kind of person. Now, Tupac had more of a political conscience and more of a side of wanting to walk the line, but also wanting to create his own vision of the legacy he wanted to leave behind. He's talking about the legacy. His mother had a legacy. Um, I feel like there were so many things around him, but he wanted to do that. That was not going to be agreeable with the record label that he was. And it's interesting because he's showing me, he says, I thought that I could handle everything. So he's kind of letting me know that he was slightly arrogant in his pursuit of who he thought he could talk to, what he thought he could do. So he kept pushing the envelope and he was just like, basically like this. I'm <laughs> fuck you, I'm gonna do what I wanna do kind of thing in the music industry and with the people around him. Now that's not bad in the rap community, but what he's showing me is the hierarchy that was behind it that started with his birth. So his family, okay, so the family of birth with him, including his birth father, these people were all connected politically, okay? So obviously they were political activists and they were politically inclined and they fought for their people and they fought for ideology and they fought to have their ideas heard and to be seen. But I'm going beyond that. They were liter literally politically connected. They were literally politically connected. So they were connected to different politicians and there was an agenda behind what each of them did. Tupac is showing me that there was an agenda for him that came from the government, which is really weird because he was kind of fighting the establishment. But as he's fighting the establishment, his soul is showing me that he was also connected to the establishment and there was an expectation about how he was to respond, what he was supposed to do and how he was supposed to do things. So this, this persona that was Tupac also had karmic responsibility and that he doesn't care for very much. That's like, I don't even want to deal with that. Um, I feel like as he got going, he's kind of showing me that as he got going with his music, which he himself knew would happen, but didn't quite believe it would happen. And sometime after he moved to California is when he really got his ass kicked is what he's telling me. Um, he started to become the character that he was playing all the way along. So there was something that he learned here that was really part of the experience of who he was. And he learned it once he moved to California, he saw all kinds of things. And he's basically saying he tried to stay sober and drug free for real. That was something he really tried to do. There was a not wanting to lose control of the way one thinks the way one is. So he really tried to stay 
pretty much sober. A lot of what you see with him and a lot of the persona that you see was really an act. In other words, it was a presentation because he felt like that's what he was supposed to be doing. So Tupac presented himself one way because he felt like as he climbed the ladder, he could basically climb the ladder, get notoriety, and then start creating things the way that he wanted for the young people in his community, the black community, and do it in a little bit of a different way. And again, his music wasn't quite as radical as it's portrayed. And there's a huge, huge, huge recognition of how much you guys love him. Um, there is... Uh, there's hands in prayer with him. There's gratitude with him. There's all kinds of things on the other side. And there is regret about not seeing things clearly in his own life. He didn't see who he let into his life. Okay, he's talking about people very close to him. He didn't see who his friends actually were and who they weren't. Now, some of the people around him were not his friends and he kind of knew that. So these are, I am assuming, contemporary counterparts. And he didn't care about that, but there were people that he was intimate with and close with, and he had no idea that they really weren't on his side. So he didn't see that clearly. The boy is a psychic boy, okay? So very, very psychic, very empathic, but as an empathic human, he basically drew to him opportunists or people with agendas. Now, what he is talking about, and I can't tell if it's because he's a Gemini or he's literally talking about this, but he's talking about his two sides, okay? So he's talking about the one side that he knew who he was and the other side who he didn't know who he was. So there's two sides to his personality that he's describing, and one of them is orchestrated by the power around him, and one of them is authentic to who he is. And he's saying that the audience who can feel him know who he is authentically, but that's not always what was expressed out there. So what was expressed, um, kind of showing me when he went to court and he had to go in front of the judge, and I can't even remember what that was for. I'm sure it was for some sort of fight or something, but he's showing me being in court and he's standing there and I'm seeing him with his hands on the, the, wherever the people stand before they go before the judge. And I can feel the disconnection from where he is because he doesn't understand how he got there. So I feel this was some kind of a setup because he's just like, but he's not going to show it, but that's how he feels. So I feel like that's one of the first betrayals and it's a betrayal that's pushing him down a road. It's also being orchestrated to create him, his persona, that he was, the people around him, because of his popularity or because of the way society responded to him, were grooming him to be what they wanted him to be. So with his amazing charismatic personality came this responsibility to not be controlled by people around him who wanted to control how that charismatic rapper was so over here are people and there's many of them over here trying to control how he responded to things and i'm beginning to think more and more he's in aries moon because he's just like i'm not having any part of that so every which way he was speaking out of turn that's a gemini too speaking out of turn speaking around the corner speaking with anger saying you know caustic things that kind of thing so and he is telling me that he was arrogant and he is also saying that he has regret for his passing. There's regret that he died on his own part. He's not off on an island. I know there are people that say that, but from what I'm picking up, he's actually on the other side. Now I can understand why you feel he might be still alive because there is that feeling of him being alive because the energy is very buoyant. It's very, very buoyant. It's around, he's around, he's not in shame. He's not in sadness, but he is being quite honest, brutally honest, in fact, because he has regret about what he did and how he passed. There's a lot of regret. His mother was a broken woman. His mother literally was broken, okay? Broken at the end of her life. Broken down, broken. Malfunctioning is basically what he says. Broken. Because everything that she believed, he's kind of going into the philosophy of the family, but everything that she believed and everything that she fought for and everything that she thought was relevant wasn't. It is, 
but it wasn't because it left her with nothing, okay? She didn't have her child, she didn't have her reputation. Um, she was very much maligned at the end of her life and he's basically showing me that she was manipulated out of so many things but didn't really care. So I, I'm assuming she's passed on. I'm not seeing her here, but I am thinking she's passed on by what he's saying. Completely maligned at the end of her life. Um, what she believed in and what she was fighting for and here's the key word she was promised now there's governmental promise in the background with his mother so his mother before she had him okay before she gave birth there is promise she's high up with the politicians sounds very strange because i don't know why it sounds strange it just sounds strange so she is in the hierarchy she's talking to government people there's one man in particular i see that she speaks to that I'm gonna call a politician that has control over the way that policy is run and things are done. So she is birthing a child after these deals have been made, after these things have been done. So she is being told, you can have this, we will keep you supported, you can, you can speak this way. Your child, it's almost as if the child was promised to carry on that pursuit and it was told to her that this is what you need to do. It's almost like, um, it's almost like they were setting up a game using his mother against other people and him and his childhood and his words. So he was basically siphoned into this life is what I'm seeing. He was pushed into this life and it was through the family and it was through the family hierarchy. So he was born into this. This is not um, somebody who came to it because, oh my God, they're so talented. Now he was, really ahead of his time and extremely talented and way too young to have passed away. However, his family was set to have him do this. So he was given opportunity along the way, guided and pushed, although to himself, he was unaware of this, but aware of it. So he was not consciously aware of it, but unconsciously underneath, he felt that he had a karma he had to pursue. That's why he pursued it, because I need to pursue this. So he was very aware of the feelings around him and why he did what he did without understanding that it was already set into motion that this was what he was supposed to do. Very interesting. It's like actually kind of fascinating that he's talking about. He's showing me in steps of how it's going. So first he was born and they had to restructure the way that he felt about himself in order for him to affect the public. So he was pushed out there in order to affect the public. And this is where he says he was arrogant because he was like a fuck you, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. So somewhere internally, that fighter came out and he didn't, and by the way, I'm going right over here as I'm speaking, talking about fighting. He's talking about Snoop Dogg and Drake and he's talking about Coachella. Okay, so these people are another fuck you. I keep wanting to say fuck you. I like to say it anyway, but I feel like I'm saying it for him. These two, he says, are just laughable. Like he is laughing at them and it's really interesting because he manages to insert himself everywhere even though they are agendizing him for their own purposes. It's not gonna work because his soul spirit is too strong. And I have a message for them which sounds really odd uh but he's not trapped so i don't know what they did after he passed that would make them think that he was trapped but he's not trapped and his energy's out there and you can't stop him he's not trapped i don't know what that means um because he died so obviously he wasn't trapped right he the body was dead and it was buried or cremated whatever and he went on but he's saying for those two I'm not trapped. So his energy is stronger and there's always a reckoning is how he's making me feel. Now, the other part of this, which I'm seeing is his karma and he speaks of it. Okay, so let's jump ahead to the night that he died. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Um, okay, as I look around with him, as I look at the contracts and the deals that he's making, he is another musician and I'm repetitive when I say this to the point of ad nauseum, but he's another musician that had another idea for how he wanted to do his music. He had a goal. So there's another goal and he wasn't gonna be allowed to do it. There was no way, but that wasn't actually what the problem was. And there are many people that wanted him dead, but the people that actually killed him are gonna surprise you. That's what I'm seeing. So the person that he feels is responsible for his passing is nobody that's ever been mentioned before. 
according to him, or at least he's making me feel that way. There were many people that wanted him dead, okay? So a lot of people, people he worked with, West Coast versus East Coast versus record labels versus people he knew, people within his own label, other rappers, probably his neighbors, just about everybody. Somebody want to take a pop shot at him. However, what gets most men into trouble? This is kind of what he's saying to me. He's saying, what gets most people into trouble? Now that entire night when they're talking about him going out the door, and I believe that he was in Vegas, and I believe that he was going to see Mike Tyson fight, or did see Mike Tyson fight. What would make you leave your hotel room without your bulletproof vest on, because he had one and had been wearing it because there were death threats. What would make you leave? What one thing really screws men up across the board more than anything else on the planet Earth? More than drugs, more than alcohol, more than money. What? Women. So what would make you leave your hotel room without your bulletproof vest? Especially when you've been getting death threats. Other rappers are threatening to, you know, put a cap in your head. What would stop you? Somebody who says, oh no, I mentioned he should wear this vest. He's showing me, actually, there's two things going on simultaneously. There was a hit ordered on him and it was repeated to him. The hit was from a politician. A politician connected to his mother's side of the family. A politician, and I'm assuming that's back east, a politician ordered the hit on him. Now that sounds really weird because what was he really doing that anybody in the government would give a shit about? It wasn't that, it was the way that he was leading people beyond what they had expected and without following or leading them within the lines. He was coloring outside of the lines. This was a politically ordered hit with gangsters that were taking government money in order to align themselves and their people, the black community, in a certain way in order to have things orchestrated the way that the government wanted. Sounds really weird, but that's what I'm getting. Politically, so this was a political hit on a black rapper for a reason, in order to maneuver people in a direction to respond, and I'm seeing that. So what do you do if you want to put a hit on someone besides just mowing them down like in a third world country where they just blow people up? You kind of put a love interest in front of them and perhaps the love interest's father is connected to the police department who's connected to the rappers and in the music industry connected to the political part and you kind of all are one big happy family and the girl, i.e. the thing that can take a man down 10 times more than not, okay, than drugs and alcohol and anything is a female, that female can tell her father what's going on and he can report back so we know the whereabouts of this man and it's not like they wouldn't have somebody watching him anyway because I mean husband and wives have their husband, their mates followed all the time. But in this particular instance it goes all the way from his mother's side to the political deal that she struck before he was born and the politician that ordered that hit because of the social consciousness and connection to Tupac. So it's even, it's not gang rivalry the way that it's presented. It is, and it is also. But behind that is a political, political component. And then behind that, weirdly, okay, and I noticed this on the chart, so regardless of the time of his birth, he has Saturn in the last degrees of Taurus, which is the homicidal degree, 28th and 29th degree of Taurus. Do we expect less? And we have it running in tandem with his Venus. This is karmic responsibility through a love relationship and with the female mother is your first love relationship. So when you look to someone's chart, you're looking for the Venus and the moon to determine the relationship with the mother and then the future wife, girlfriends, or the karma. When Saturn's connected to it, that's a hell of a thing to have happen because it means that the needs that he's expressing from a loving perspective are coming through karmically. Karmically doesn't mean fun. Karma is not fun. <laughs> Karma is balance. So he was being balanced in order to politically control the black community and the white community through 
the actions of his murder. And that's actually what happened. That's what I'm seeing happen. Now, I'm going to say something outlandish here. I know they said a car drove up, shot through the windows, shot him. I think Biggie Smalls was driving and then he got shot later on, like five months, six months. Okay, so this car is driving down the street in Vegas and just, we know they do roll up on them and they just pull their guns out and shoot. I am actually getting there was somebody in the car that pulled the trigger, not somebody outside the car. I am also getting that he was not dead after the shooting. Well, I guess he wasn't, he went to the hospital, but he should have walked out of the hospital. There was a female romantic interest that made sure that this wasn't going to happen. Now, is it the one that he was dating at the time? Or is it another one that went to visit him? Or is it an ex one? I don't know that I'm not hearing that because I'm kind of feeling the energy fade away, but I'm definitely seeing that the shooting happened in the car from behind him. And I'm feeling it was politically connected. It, there was a connection to his girlfriend of the time, her father, the police department and a politician back East that was connected to his mother before he was born. It's connected all the way back. It's like little dominoes all the way along. This was orchestrated and it was orchestrated in order to make people and corral them and make them think a certain way. Exactly the opposite of what Tupac was. Exactly the opposite, okay? This man was not for that bullshit of anybody telling anyone what to do. He was actually freedom-oriented, um, way, way ahead of his time. I, I can feel him. Okay, this will sound really weird, but he was kind of a song and dance man, not necessarily just a rapper. So he was multifaceted, multi-talented, and he still speaks. There's still a part of him that speaks in society, which I find really interesting. He comes to people all the time. His energy is very buoyant. It bounced back. And again, I'm going back to Snoop Dogg and I'm going to Drake and I'm going to that hologramic thing at Coachella and I'm going right there and I'm saying bullshit, bullshit y'all, bullshit. I call bullshit on it. That's what he's saying. It, just whatever, whatever. Okay. You can't control my energy. There was a reason they did it and it was an energy play and he's not trapped. That's his message. I really don't know what that means. I'm assuming they were trying to bind his energy by doing that and harness what he could do. What he is showing me politically at the moment is that there's many things changing and he's on the side of believing that there's a spiritual war going on right now and he's on the side of flipping the energy. So he's trying to help people elevate the energy because he was literally born into a situation that he wasn't aware of, but yet he was forced to, but he had inklings about it. So he's saying subconsciously his whole life was forced in a certain direction, which wasn't his authentic soul path. Tupac is basically letting me know that his entire life was orchestrated and he felt it on a subconscious level, but it wasn't really his authentic soul path. He is showing me that from the other side, he's free to express himself and he can see clearly and he can see what he was involved in. And when he goes back over his life, um, he is referencing a little girl. I don't know if he had any children. I don't think I'm familiar with that. I don't think I've heard it. But he is showing me a little girl back at the time that he died. So I tend to believe somebody had his child. I don't know why they wouldn't have come public with it. But he is showing me this little girl that is his child is what he's saying. Like this is how it feels to me. He feels very loving and very paternal towards this child. And this little child is in his thoughts all the time. Obviously she's grown because he hasn't been around for however many years, 20 plus years. But I am, I think it's 20, 23 years. I think it's gonna be 23 years now. But I am feeling this little female that's around him. And I'm also feeling that we're gonna hear more and more about him coming up. So when I'm looking at the energy of him, he's getting ready to step forward again. He's getting ready to come forward. He's getting ready to speak. 
I don't know what's being planned, but they can't shut him up now. So he's going to start coming through a lot of other people and people are gonna start speaking on his behalf and that's what I feel. This is my first video on Tupac and once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.